So you've had like a long storied career and obviously in the voice acting industry. So, um, and especially when it comes to Yu Yu Hakusho and how popular that is amongst like the anime community. So I wanted to ask you if you can walk me through what it was like when you first auditioned for a Yu Yu Hakusho as Yusuke. Absolutely. We were actually uh, auditioning you know, actors for the whole show, right? And, uh, you know, skating through, trying to figure out who was gonna be voicing who, listening to all the different auditions, really kind of had it figured out from most of the characters, but Yusuke was an absolute, you know, mystery. We had we had no idea who was going to end up kind of doing this voice. And we had some contenders, uh, and it was the producer at the time uh, who asked if I would hop into the booth and give it a shot. And so uh, I did. And then that kind of ousted me from the casting process, right? So, so now I'm kind of out working on, you know, a different job or whatever it was, uh, you know, responsibility I was, I was managing at that particular time, waiting kind of for the answer to come back. And it was towards the end of the day that the producer rolled back in and, and uh, let me know that they had decided to go with me. And so I kind of tried to act real nonchalant and cool and appreciate it and say thank you. Uh, by the time I got home though, I was running around the block nearly three times. I was so excited about this. So it was just an absolute <laughs> incredible opportunity to kind of, I, I guess to some degree, feel like it landed in my lap. Uh, it was probably the next day that the stress of, gee, I hope it's good started to occur to me. For sure, for sure. I, I think I think it's safe to say you nailed it. May I have my ball, please? Listen, kid, that's dangerous. There are cars going by that will splatter you into the pavement. Well, another thing I wanted to ask you, uh, when it came to your audition for it, um, uh, what did you do to try to sort of like bring uh, your performance as Yusuke to the forefront? Was there like any like specific cues or anything that like kind of informed how you approached uh, performing the character? I had uh, watched the whole series uh, ahead of time, right, to associate myself with the show, to, to, you know, be able to have, you know, intellect in regards to casting it, knowing, you know, who these characters were, uh, knowing who was going to be coming in the show. Uh, I'd say the biggest mystery that revealed itself from having watched it beforehand was discovering that in episode 111, it's revealed that the narrator for the entire series is actually a character that has also been throughout the entire series so that was <laughs> that was good to to have learned otherwise that could have been a uh, you know a mistake not even the supposedly wise koenma could know that i won't give you the narrator job if you annoy me <laughs> i think it was watching everything and, and i kind of had started figuring out this character of yusuke you know what what made him tick what were his motivations you know the the way that he monitored and maintained his relationships with different individuals. Um, and so, you know, kind of getting my head around it from the perspective of, of voice directing it, I think probably had a, a great deal to do with at least how my approach to the character in the audition most likely came up. Outside yeah. of that, it was just using the animation to kind of lead me, guide me to, uh, you know, to the way Yusuke Kay is. <laughs> the famous spirit gun. That was a warning shot for the human inside you. Next time I won't miss. Anime communities have had a lot of protagonists come and go over the years, but Yusuke kind of still remains a household name among fans who kind of grew up with the Toonami stuff. Like, even those like fan created stuff like RDC World who will like make um, Yusuke as like their main guy and part of like um, the crew when there's like Ichigo or there's like Luffy or there's like Goku and stuff, so. Goku is always starting like, I really think he has a problem. He always trying to fight. Like, we know you're the strongest in Anime House. So what? I want to ask you, why do you think Yu Yu Hakusho's popularity has remained so steadfast over the last 30 years? It's just a unique show, you know? It uh, it didn't overtell its story, right? It, it was 112 episodes and then out, right? Uh, so, they, you know, no... No fight tended to rock, you know, go on for eight episodes or something to that effect. Frieza? What? I'd rather be a brainless beast than a heartless monster. So it just, it felt to me like it was a fast moving story. Um, and the characters are so relatable, really all of them, you know? Um, and I think there's just a, there's an, there is a very identifiable level of humanity with that show and ultimately its its message. And I think that I think that uh, made it into the hearts of people, you know? And so Yu Yu Hakusho also, as you um, know, is gonna be uh, getting its own live adaptation uh, treatment with Netflix. So I wanted to ask you, are you planning on watching it at all? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so excited that, you know, again, you know, something like Yu Yu Hakusho has kind of struck a chord in the hearts of the fans that are out there that, that, they, that they want this. I think that's great. Last but not least, I wanted to ask you, uh, what's your favorite line or scene from the show that um, has kind of like been the most fun for you to like reminisce about acting about? Ah, that's so tough for me, right? Because like each scene, each moment, each, you know, each character really, I mean, I, I loved working on this show, right? It, it meant so much to me at the time of being able to work on it and then just being able to have been a part of it, right? Uh, so it's hard for me to kind of pick, I like this, you know, to cherry pick the character or a scene. I like this better than that. Um, I could certainly, though, uh, relay some pretty fun stories. Uh, let's see, the Tagoro fight. Uh, we used to record in rather small recording booths called Whisper Rooms, and they're usually foam covered on the inside and whatnot. By the time I finished those three episodes, uh, my knuckles had become so raw from having punched the inside of the, the booth so many times uh, just because of the level of energy and, and intensity of which we, we were trying to you know bring to that show. Uh, so that was pretty entertaining, a pretty, a pretty you know youthful way to approach anything. I certainly wouldn't ask anyone to do that at all these days. So, so I think that's probably one of the things that Yu Yu Hakusho had going for it as well was, you know, it had a lot of people who felt like we were trying to prove that we could do good dubs, that we could make a program. It didn't have to just be Dragon Ball Z and, uh, you know, and youth, a lot of energy. Let's see who can take a bigger ass kicking. Spirit go!